Perfect. Thanks a lot, Mahtav. Um, and it's exciting to see more people coming in. We're at 64 participants now. And I have uh, the great honor to welcome our two guests, Bully Elsen and Marc Barbier, for today's session. Um, Bully Elsen is a senior researcher in innovation and transition processes at Wageningen University and research. And uh, his work focuses on processes of innovation and change in a range of sectors, but centrally on change towards sustainable agriculture. And as Bully has a background both in technical and in social science, uh, most of his research is carried out in interdisciplinary um, teams and in cooperation with practitioners. Uh, he also runs the research and consultancy company Arnus, giving advice on sustainability transition processes in various fields. And uh, Marc Barbier is research director at INRAI, the, which is a French national institute for agriculture, food and environment at the Université Paris-Est. Uh, he's also the director of a graduate school at Université Gustave Eiffel. Um, there will be a, there could be a few other French acronyms here, which I will um, try to drop. But his research focus lies on the social studies of knowledge uh, regimes within the nexus of agriculture, food, and environment, um, and also on the governance of sustainability transitions in these fields. And Mark has founded and headed a range of research units, projects, uh, networks surrounding the study of science, technology, and innovation. He's also the co-editor of the Revue d'Anthropologie des Connaissances. And together, um, Bully and Mark have founded the STR and thematic group on transitions in agri-food systems, which will be um, also one of the topics of today. So uh, I'm uh, really excited. We're all um, happy to have the two of you here. And uh, with that, I hand over to you for today's session. Oh, okay, but Leo, uh... actually, before I hand over, just one further quick announcement. The format of today's session, sorry that I uh, forgot about that, uh, will be slightly different from the previous ones because there will actually be um, a group exercise and an assignment in the end. Um, but Bully and Mark will tell us more about that um, when they're done. So now, uh, without further ado, uh, thanks to the two of you and welcome, and we look forward to your presentations. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Leo. Let me share my screen. Uh, do you see my PowerPoint on agri-food transition research? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, very briefly, I will uh, give a little bit of background, just a couple of minutes on the background of agri-food transition research and what Mark and I have been uh, working on in the past two decades. And then Mark will give an, uh, an introduction on the content of the, of the matter on the challenges in agri-food transition research. So uh, on this background, um, since the early uh, 2000s, the transitions uh, research and the STRN group, et cetera, have really kicked off and there has been an enormous growth of this research field. But uh, what we recognize is that agro agriculture and food received little attention compared to some of the others like uh, energy and mobility and, and a number of others. At the same time, this is a major societal and political issue, and that is uh, very much, uh, especially the past decade, has grown rapidly on the agenda of many policymakers and societal groups, etc. So, our challenge is how can we stimulate the attention for agri food transitions within the SDRN community and to create a, a platform where uh, scholars can meet and exchange and where actually a lot is happening. And that's the sort of mission that uh, Mark and I have been working on for the past, uh, well, decade and a half now, I would say. So around 2008, uh, Mark and I found each other for the first time, or a little before that, uh, actually, probably. And then we took the initiative to organize the first international workshop on what we then called System Innovation for Sustainable Agriculture with a nice acronym, uh, CISA. And this led to a series of international workshops. The first was held in Lillestad in 2010, then there was a second in Paris in 2014, and a third in uh, Riga in Latvia in 2018. And the papers of the first two of these uh, were uh, published as an edited volume. 
And uh, you find the link here uh, where you can get the, I assume that uh, our PowerPoints will be shared with, with the group uh, afterwards. Uh, final uh, thing is how do we move to an active research network? So not just the paper tiger, but some something where really something is happening. And then Mark and I, uh, yeah, after the last conference in Riga, we, we, we had a meeting and we thought that the CISA process was a little bit haphazard, depending a lot on individuals. And we started to worry about how can we create a more permanent basis. And then we got in touch with the SDRN board. And that uh, eventually resulted in a new thematic group within the SDRN network that was uh, now founded uh, officially a couple of months ago. And by now we have some 50 interested scholars. And uh, now uh, say the main challenge is to go from this uh, paper tiger or virtual tiger into something that really does work and that is really biting. And uh, the thing that we are currently involved in is uh, first to define the key elements of a research uh, agenda for this group. And uh, these are the things that Mark will go in, in his, go in, into in his presentation uh, after that to define a plan of activity. What are we actually going to do? We're not just going to wait and say, wait, wait and see, but people actually have to do things. Well, the least that we can do is to be present at conferences and also organize dedicated workshops like the CISA workshop that we had, but many other things as well. Well, we are now in the midst of that discussion and anybody interested in agri-food transitions uh, is very much encouraged to get in touch with Mark and myself and, and be, uh, become a member of that thematic group and uh, help us doing and realizing this. That's it for now. Uh, let me see, how do I unshare? Somebody already did. Perfect. I think Mark just took over from you. That's what he always does. <laughs> Um, Mark, we cannot hear you yet. Are you already talking? No, it's it's okay. Ah, that was not. You hear me? Yeah, now it's working. Okay. Let's okay. let's go quickly. Uh, not run out of time because uh, time is always a constraint. So I was just try to propose uh, a, a quick over overall view of of what has been more or less established uh, during this decade, and also punctualized by the last dialogue session we had at the IST conferences. So it's to say that it's only, I would say, first seeds, uh, old seeds also, sometimes you will see, uh, to, uh, to say that this thematic group um, it, it must have uh, an existence after us. And that's also what was the point with Bully when we decided to, 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 to start with this group, is to establish uh, really also the idea that the, the show must go on. So we are starting, but we expect, of course, that some others will take the lead after us. Uh, for that, um, just to to recall the the, the history of this agrofood uh, world. So I just think is it, here some of the uh, the posters you can gather in France about how it used to be when agriculture was presented as first uh, a, a realm of, of nature. Then you have this type of machinery and also sexist view of how to fertilize land and the uh, adventure of tractors. And that's the, the year uh, when I was born. And in the 60s almost started the idea that agriculture, national agriculture should not only feed the people, but also to feed the world. So th th there is, a, 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 of course, and it's known, a, a large history of what is the uh, control of nature from the point of view of a more or less like we could say today, technocentric approach of mastering nature. So it's also in the in the field of uh, social science, uh, innovation in, in agriculture from the Rogers studies and others has been really a kind of idiom of what is innovation. And uh, so it's a combination of technology push with uh, a lot of uh, uh, influence as, as to say uh, of life science and applied research, but also, definitely a kind of uh, market uh, 
uh, market pool uh, design, which is based both on the uh, the idea of sectoral policies that have been, you know, enforced after the Second World War, and that's the combination of two that has really established uh, 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 what we could call uh, uh, agro food system uh, uh, today. Uh, and uh, as we know, it also uh, corresponds to um, the governance of the system, both on the side of knowledge production, but also on the side of policy and all type of. Uh, of uh, I would say private, uh, corporate uh, uh, incentives uh, directly on market, uh, uh, more than uh, only subsidies. Uh, so the, there is a kind of knowledge islands between the, what we could say the, the agronomist, the economist, the public officer that is also um, today a matter of, uh, of discussion uh, at the level of the European policy design. So a second point is that never forget also the historical depth we have, not only to USA and USSR, but to the idea that this feeding the world um, promise has been established under the idea of a chain, agro-food chain, that is uh, uh, represented here. And what, what the slide said is that this is not something old. It still renew a lot today with the, the idea of uh, agriculture, uh, for uh, dot zero supply chain with the um, invocation of uh, internet of object uh, or what we call the connected agriculture, precision agriculture. Uh, th there are new promises today linked to blockchain to renew the idea of, of, this, uh, of this chain which, that, which is already very old. Second thing it, which is important to understand also, and uh, there is something like here, sorry, very important is that the first game of simulation in the world in terms of playing is the farming game. So there, there is both on the side of, uh, I would say, uh, the gaming uh, as far also as we know as the uh, at the level of international uh, organization, a very, very huge capacity of modelizing and simulating the evolution of agriculture, more than only food now, it's only uh, dealing with feed, fuel and fiber um, uh, in terms of uh, how much agriculture is involved in various types of sector. So it's not only food sector, so to say. Today, the tensions are very high in the agenda on how agriculture can contribute to energy, it's more specifically today, um, uh, sector. So no, bear in mind also, uh, and it's for uh, uh, all of us uh, as food consumers, something we know it's the number of labels, so it means the, the numbers of, of, uh, of marketing capacities that are all not only today ruled by private or corporate companies, but also ruled by a lot of initiatives and movement that try to qualify, to characterize, and also to intervene in how the, the, the food process, processes are coming to the consumers. So that's another very important uh, dimension of today uh, uh, evolution of agri-food uh, systems. Here, I'm taking this work from a very nice and interesting work from co French colleagues. It's also to understand how much the food systems are diverse in terms of uh, uh, the way the food is provisioned, is provisioned to consumers. Uh, here, you can see this uh, uh, proposal of a typology from gardening food system, local, traditional, agro-industrial food system, and also very much differentiated uh, food system based on patrimonial, bio-organic, or ethical, um, e e ethical dimensions. And here, the, the, the paper is nice because it, it tries also to depict how this uh, typology uh, is working in various situations. And what it's good to understand also is that though we could have the idea that everything is agro-industrial in this world, based on container society, uh, there are still a lot of uh, food systems that are sustained um, more, more or less in niche, but uh, as we know, it's a lot of niches. So the issue stays that how much uh, this agro-industrial food system uh, regime uh, uh, is also, so to say, uh, entangled sometimes even with other type of regime. So another very important dimension of this sector, and here it's the example with this complex science, it's complex because the issue is complex, 
is the, the, the existence of a lot of controversies that have been coming from the design of food systems with first GMOs, as we know it in Europe, and the differences between Europe and US states in terms of legal uh, uh, legal dimension are extremely important on that. But it has been also the food scares with the BAC and other kind of food uh, uh, food disasters. And today it's also coming uh, right to the COVID since we know there are a lot of connection between the rural dimension, uh, the provisioning of food from this rural dimension and the existence and the the, the, the spreading of some virus that are zoonotic virus. So, so to say that the pesticides has been claimed also as a very important uh, uh, issue uh, in Europe and everywhere in the world. And uh, so we have here a pesticide use uh, directive that has been established and it's normally to be enforced uh, in all uh, member states. And it's raising a lot of issues like uh, we will perhaps discuss in, in the groups afterwards. So that's the issue. You see how much uh, pesticides are consumed in Europe. Uh, it's based on uh, you know, uh, FAO stats here. And also how much, despite the idea that we should decrease them, they're still raising in terms of the evolution of the index that measure the, the, the use of active substances that, uh, are, using, uh, that are sold, uh, sold in, in, in France here as in this example. So despite this, I would say that it, it has, this agricultural system has been also much um, challenged by a lot of new knowledge, specifically when the uh, ecology and agronomy has, been, has started to join together to, to rethink what, was, what could be a, um, a, a, a agricultural uh, production that would pay attention to ecological fitness and to uh, all types of uh, biological process that have been erased from uh, the, the landscape uh, thanks to or because of the use of fertilizers and, and, and pesticides. So there, there is a, a, an important trend of research and, and, and of Denkstil, if I, I use the, the German Fleck uh, notion, that also is very important in the agronomic sciences today. So here I will be quick, but uh, it's, uh, it's also to notice that this uh, research uh, uh, this knowledge regime interfere a lot with the classical field trial regime here. There's the photo of the first uh, pro article published by Altieri and Glissman together, the only one perhaps. And it's a, it's a, a, a very uh, classical trial, but in this trial, they maintain the existence of weeds in order to welcome uh, benefit uh, insects. So there, there are a lot of today uh, uh, controversies, but there are also new alliances within the science world, how to bring up agroecological solutions or more sustainable solution. It's really high in the agenda, as well as also the renew we have today with the, the question of soil and, and, and living soil and the biology of soils. So lately uh, we are uh, under the food system summits and it's just to, uh, to recall you that how much these uh, old issues of nourishing the world, doing it quite nicely with diets and also with question of gender, question of consumptions. You have all the list of action track that are at work at the moment within the Food System Summit that it's running. And you, you, you can see how much uh, there is a kind of maintenance, uh, in, in kind of uh, um, uh, sustain, sustain, a lot of issues are sustained quite the same for at least 20 years now. So uh, it, the, the question for us is, uh, is still how much it can so much not change when issues have been delivered for decades. So that, that's a very intriguing, intriguing uh, question. And that's a, really a question for uh, sustainable transition studies. So from that point, uh, 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 this kind of assessment uh, of the old time, we, uh, we try to specify for the STR and uh, communities what could be the main, I would say, interesting uh, dimension to tackle with. And it's, of course, a list, but uh, uh, a list is also, also to be uh, enlarged. So the first thing, and it has been recalled by, uh, by Bully, the notion of system innovation has been very, uh, it's an old one, Bully took part to the edition of this book. 
uh, and it's related, as I said, a lot on the, the idea of how the things are evolving uh, with innovation and technology. And as far as, as I said it, there are a lot of reflection uh, going uh, in, the, in the agronomist and at large social sciences dealing with foods, food systems uh, for the last 30 years. And people uh, in this field didn't wait for the transitions to, to start to elaborate and think uh, transition theories. Uh, in, in order to think uh, uh, about the evolution of this uh, of this system, agricultural system. So there are two things that are running, and we, we can see it in the uh, in the how much uh, uh, diverse is the estuarine communities. I think there there are kind of epistemic uh, challenge here is is how at the same time to understand how much we have to pay attention to the past in order to, to understand how the present has been muddled through. Uh, uh, various types of issues, initiatives, and uh, other types of innovation pathways. And at the same time, with the transition notion, how much we have to reflect about what could be the possible and desirable futures to be chosen. So there, there is here something that corresponds to what I, I call an epistemic divide, because it's not the, you, you can't uh, think and produce knowledge in the same way with these two approaches, but desperately, we need to confront what we learned from the past or we, we didn't learn from the past to the idea of how do we shape the future. And that's, I think, a quite important epistemic challenge to join historical approach with more, I would say, foresight or um, uh, pronostic and simulation uh, approaches. So uh, a very important tension that has been al already very largely uh, published uh, and it started with GMO controversies. The idea that these agrofood systems would be divided in, I would say, two pathway. One is would be the greening one, greening and washing. Well, we can do better if we pay attention to sustainability, and we have all the reason to uh, to think that it's possible. So let's do it better. Let's have our goals, and let's try to uh, to green um, to green agricultural and agrofood processes. When the other one is more uh, based on a rethink perspective, meaning of a complete transformation, and there are a lot of not only controversies against this optimization pathways, but also a lot of exploration, realization niches that tend to have to, pr to promote proof of concept of this possibility of doing things differently, uh, both from, from, from fork to fork. So here comes a, a list of challenges uh, and associated to each of it, uh, something that we call field of collective inquiry, meaning that it could be explored a lot more largely by, by the, the participants to the group and, and elsewhere. So the, the first one is that uh, uh, it's based on the idea of the socio-technical regime of agro-food system having, is having clearly an historicity. So uh, what we are facing now is the result of a lot of black boxes explore the possibility of uh, and the potentiality of uh, sustainable transition certainly means to understand what has been black boss and how. So for that reason, we think that there is a fallacy about uh, the idea of nourishing the world. And uh, for that reason, uh, we may benefit from a lot of possible comparison between countries or regional or, re or regions in the world to understand how this uh, regime uh, is having also locally, not only globally, but locally uh, an historicity. The second point is also to understand how much this um, agrofood system or uh, how much the, the agrofood sectors is modeled for a lot of uh, atomized socioeconomic structures, policy making levels, big, small, cooperative, horizontal, and it's it's rather unique today compared to the uh, to other industrial uh, sector to have such such a mix of actors and such a mix of of also articulation between the private and public, the civic, the state, and also network administration. So there is a, a real large laboratory of socio technical transition uh, in agrofood system, and we are claiming for here for the interest of of, of studying all this. Um, uh, of the socioeconomic structures and policy making level. Uh, the, the third one is based more or less on the idea that uh, 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 the, 
you know, despite the idea of nourishing the world, they are always very specific or idiosyncratic um, socio-technical or niches that express uh, the, 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 the capacity of actors to nourish uh, markets, uh, to push uh, commodities on the market, and on that's perhaps more of an anthropologist, uh, and as we see in Riga, it's important for the social uh, sociology, uh, rural sociology still, it's how much all these things are also based on assembly of cultural norms, value, benef belief, beliefs, and, and very much also today to technical knowledge that are claimed as new, but that could have been already uh, existing before. So the, the exploration specifically of new possibility is uh, as to pie to this uh, uh, capacity, local capacity of, 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 of actors. Well, I will keep on with, with this kind of list, sorry. But, um, well, the, another point which is very important is that uh, agro-food systems are, are really nourished for ages by the idea that we could rationalize, technologically rationalize uh, pro agricultural processes. So even we could say that agriculture as a sector has been defined as a sector to be rationalized. So to say the people who should, could have been nuts before and if we rationalize them, they could become more efficient. So that's something of course that's been criticized but it's also to be understood as a, as a kind of also uh, definitely a, a kind of a point of inquiry for us to, and specifically today with the, the coming of, of the digital turn and the, the importance of knowledge infrastructures. Uh, another point is also the, the fact, as I said before, that this agro-food uh, world, this agro-food system world, correspond also to a lot of tension. We all are consumers. We all have at least a grandpa who was living in the rural space. We are all scarce with eating shit. We, they are, we are all more or less scarce with the fact that the, the climate is changing and that carbon is really an issue. And it's a lot of carbon in, in, in agriculture at work. So I guess here, there is a really uh, a, an opportunity for those interested in transition studies to pick up a lot of issues about locking, agro-industrial locking, and how all these controversies, crises, are momentum uh, for phasing out. And uh, uh, it deserves really, uh, I think, uh, and we are working with Bruno Trondheim uh, in this uh, to understand the process of phasing out in, in its relation to this crisis and controversies. The last but not the least, there are some elements also of inquiry that looks pretty pretty interesting is uh, within this nexus of tensions, there are a lot of solutions, problems coming from niches or also coming from uh, socio-technical regime uh, itself when it's trying to green. So uh, we have here the contentions about agroecology that has been coming out, but there are a lot of controversies and how we do policies with uh, this type of controversies with new intermediaries that are claiming to do the things differently how can we uh, accept that uh, food provision system should be shortened? What are then the uh, elements of contradiction that we can face with the, uh, the, the agri-food capitalism? And also how the diet issue is changing, uh, could change also very much the type of, of provisioning, of food provisioning we, we would, that would be desirable if not acceptable. There are a lot of issues on protein proteins today and peas that should be also captured as, a, as an element of tension, definitely based on what do we eat, not only what the quality of we eat without microbes or without whatever pesticides, but also uh, what is the composition of, um, of our food uh, basket. Well, then coming to the discussion, if, uh, if all these um, dimensions and field of uh, collective of, of, in, uh, and field of, of questions are interesting. It's also because we think that uh, the notion of socio-technical regime has also to be understood uh, um, not only with the idea of a landscape, but also with the idea that there is an outside of the regime. And uh, this outside of the, of the regime uh, is to be understood today as model with policy.
subpolitics, polities, a lot of actors are today uh, aware and rationally conscious about the fact that things are locked sometimes, and that when we want to change them, the landscape and its uh, and its capacity to renew regulation specifically is not enough, as well as the innovative niches, uh, nice niches of short circuits or whatever is not enough. So that there is profoundly here a question of the politics of the future that are not only in the head of researchers that we could be, but also in, in, in the head of a lot of decision makers, uh, activists, uh, also professional representative. And I think there is here clearly a question of articulating the politics of futures and politics of the present. So if we can or might do it, uh, there is also something that we can afford uh, with our uh, research fields or with, our, with this uh, our, uh, group, thematic group, is also to understand and perhaps to also enter a kind of deconstructions of what has been the pillars of the agri-food modernity in the past. Uh, again, I claim here for the idea that it's important to understand how the world has been black blocks, not in in, in globally and, and largely, but definitely always in some specific areas where it could be rationalized. So there, I think there's a, a really for the transition um, studies, um, an important field of inquiries to, to join more historical approach with the idea that if we can make a critic of the past, nice, but how does it inform the politics of the future still, I think, is a, a, a very, a very uh, demanding question. So uh, the last one is, I think, then, how much we uh, reopen this black box and what it says also about the alliances between science and politics. And as we will see also in the groups, what it says about the alliances between scientists and they call it stakeholders, but other actors, since we know that there are some very important alignments in the, in, in the past uh, to black box agriculture in, into this, uh, as we know now, uh, agri-food systems. So how do we pay attention, attention to this point of our own alliances with actors when we expect to rethink the futures and to rethink the past? So that's, I think, uh, an important issue also for, for this group. So I'm just here picking up of the discussion I have re regularly with Bruno, but it, it means for the for this IFT, for, for this group, uh, there, there is not one entry point, so not only one perspective to analyze this multi-level and process-oriented approaches. Second, as we said, uh, the, the force will be the multiplication of cases and also uh, cases that could seem a little bit awkward, but uh, the, the, the deviant case is always very heuristic. Third, uh, we believe that there are a lot of comparison to make countries, sectors, uh, sorry, uh, chains, levels, but also we guess that, and it's not what will be the next step, how can we enter discussion uh, into discussion with uh, the analysis that we could deliver about agro-food transition with other types of uh, transition. I mean, energy, mobility, uh, IT, whatever they could be. Because we have the feeling, and we know it also in our life, that uh, these type of transition are largely intricate together. So the idea of having comparison is, I think, something important. And then there are a lot of scientific problems that has to, to deal with the situation of action in which researchers are involved or not. And I think that also uh, has to be at least conceptualized or perhaps minimally discussed. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much um, for these two.